The remaining gap of open water was spanned by a wooden trestle supported by huge timber pilings. This crossing, more than 12 and a half miles long, served the SP faithfully for more than half a century. However, for years, this single track span with its low speed limitations had kept operations to a snail's pace over this vulnerable stretch of rail. The SP badly needed a more stalwart crossing to keep pace with the demands of an age of jet propulsion and fast diesel-powered locomotion. For two generations, SP trains on the heavily traveled overland route from Chicago to San Francisco had been forced to cruise at greatly reduced speeds across the trestle. Progress demanded a safe, foolproof crossing over the stretch to end an ancient bottleneck. It was about seven years ago, and we had a fellow that stopped by our, our facility in Idaho. We had an old crane there, a pretty beat up crane, but he was interested in buying that. He said that, uh, that he didn't have any money at the time, but he had a lot of wood. They came to our, our, to our shop and, and was interested in the crane. And as my father became interested in the trestle, it was very apparent that Emil needed to stay in the picture. He just come to look at the bridge and decided we'd take a stab at it. sometimes even 80 feet into the mud on the lake. And then, of course, after they've sat there for over 90 years now, it just takes something to shake and loose. I had that far. <laughs> 